I am Luca Serafini. I'm 26 years old. I live in Italy and I have uh, three brothers with uh, TBRS. Hi, I'm Casey Richter and I am currently the active president of TBRS Community. Our son is eight years old and his name is Lucas. Lucas is nonverbal. So Lucas used to be verbal. Um, he has autism. And so with that, he had, he suffered a massive regression. He used to be able to tell us his wants and needs, but now he cannot. Being a syndrome that goes worse uh, by the passing of time, every aspect of their body is basically getting worse. Every year you can basically see, the, you can actually see the differences. Cognitively is the hardest for us. He's a big boy and he has wonderful reach. <laughs> um, that can be hard for safety. If you were to walk into our house, you would think, wow, she can't decorate. <laughs> That's not it. Um, I can't have lamps. I can't have stuff on the walls because he's interested in it, which is great, right? But he looks at it and then he drops it. The main problem that I absolutely want, want to find a way to solve is their behavioral problem. Especially Matteo that has a lot of anger issues and Marco cannot stop eating. For Lucas to truly help him, it's 100% cognitive. Um, we do three speeches a week, two for like a proxy and trying to get him to verbalize, one to help him with his iPad um, communication device. We do OT, we do equine therapy. In a, and he's also in a special needs class at school that is quite similar to ABA therapy. So we are fair beat out, if you will, if Lucas could increase 10%, 20%, whatever percent you want to throw at me, that would be amazing. Like that would be beyond life changing for him, like for us as a family. One thing that I found mm, super interesting, which is something that they actually taught me, their unconditional love. They can love in ways that nobody ever can. I think nobody ever could. Hi, I'm Carrie Grenz. I am the Vice President of the TBRS Community, and I thank you all for coming today to our Collaborative Research Network Conference. You heard there from Casey and Luca two perspectives on life with TBRS and how research can help them. As a patient-led organization, we are driven by the voices of our community members, just like Casey and Luca. That's what uh, drives our programming and our priorities. And so one way that we wanted to gather those voices was through a survey this summer. We developed a jot form survey, myself, Jill Kiernan, Kit Church, and Zoe Wisnowski. It went out to our private Facebook group, and we received 66 responses. Most of them were caregivers and family members, and then there were two individuals who identified as having TBRS. The ages of people with TBRS ranged from 2 to 56 years old, and the median age was 12. We asked a whole bunch of questions, but uh, the ones most relevant for today, uh, first of all, was from the caregiver's perspective, what's the most challenging aspect of living with TBRS? And on the right-hand side there, you see that psychiatric, behavioral, and mental health issues were the number one burden on families from their perspective. Second to that is not knowing what the future may hold. I do hope that our patient registry is going to answer some of those questions and relieve that burden on caregivers. Then intellectual disabilities and communication issues came next. We also wanted to know from the patient's perspective, from their experience, what's the greatest challenge of living with TBRS? Again, keep in mind, this is primarily answered by caregivers and family members. Intellectual disability was uh, the most frequently cited thing. After that, communication issues and psychiatric and mental health issues, followed by mobility, social and family relationships. There was one person with TBRS who answered this question, and they said that not knowing what the future may hold was their greatest challenge. Then we asked about treatments for TBRS, and we presented 
this list of options here and ask respondents to rearrange them, shuffle them around in the order from most important number one down to least important number 16. Um, and this is how they ranked out in aggregate across our community. Intellectual disability, psychiatric and behavioral issues, communication issues, again, that pattern we see bubbling up to the surface, followed by some of those physical issues in TBRS, obesity, overgrowth, low muscle tone, hypermobility, cardiac defects, orthopedic issues. Then finally, some of those less common but incredibly impactful uh, issues such as cancer risk, regression, seizures, and epilepsy. What's interesting here is that three individuals responded in the order in which these options were presented. So it's hard to know if they didn't really answer this question or if that did in fact represent their priorities for treatments. Of the other 63 respondents, no two people answered in exactly the same way, which just goes to show this is a heterogeneous group with a diverse set of needs that no two individuals are alike and we're all dealing with different um, symptoms and medical issues and um, behavioral, intellectual, psychiatric issues. Then we asked what respondents would like TBRS research to focus on. Again, we see cognitive functions as being the most important, then surveillance and treatment guidelines. So how do we best care for our loved ones with TBRS followed by those physical needs after that? Again, four people, answered in the rankings that was presented to them in this question. Of the other 62 people, no two answered in exactly the same um, order. Then we asked if there was a potential treatment, would people consider a clinical trial? Maybe, and yes, I think we can lump together as yes, they would consider it. Yes, maybe I would consider it as kind of a yes, they'd probably take a look and see if it was aligned with their needs. Only one person answered that they wouldn't. This goes to show that we do have a very engaged community who wants to partner with you. Um, they're willing to try uh, experimental interventions to help their loved ones. Then lastly, we asked individuals, what would they not want to change about life with TBRS? And here we see a diverse range of of um, perspectives from, I would change everything about life with TBRS. Why would I want my child to have such a difficult life? To, we would not change anything. Our son is a person full of happiness and love making us better every day. So the bottom line that I hope that you take away from these survey responses is that we have you know, growing community of people who have totally different experiences, but, who all have the common perspective of wanting to improve the lives of their loved ones with TBRS who are willing to partner with researchers to have that done. So I hope that as we go next into our session on our research roadmap, you will join us in lending your ideas, your expertise, your resources to help us get there. Thank you.